I'm Dave Ritchie, and I'm the Canadian General Vice President of the Machinist Union. And you know, we've seen an awful lot of advertising on US TV about the Canadian health care system. Let me tell you, they're wrong. The purpose of this video is to clear up any and all misunderstandings. One might ask how many uninsured citizens exist in Canada. The answer is zero. Nada. Zilch. None. All Canadians are insured. In Canada, good quality, universally accessible medical care is regarded as a basic element of being Canadian. I think what most Americans need to understand about Canadian health care is that in Canada, every citizen is fully covered, fully insured for all medically necessary doctor and hospital. Before we had public health care in Canada, people suffered. They lost their houses, they died unnecessarily, they went bankrupt, um, they couldn't uh, get out of the hospital when they had their babies until they had enough money to pay for their rooms, so the debts kept mounting. The stories are horrific. Health care in Canada came out of um, the inhumanity of not having a public health care system. And so those situations in which people uh, face bankruptcy or you know can't leave a job because they would lose their health care benefits, these simply don't exist in this country because we have a public health care system that provides health care for all based on need, not based on how wealthy you are. <laughs> You're just so happy. Nothing wrong with you anymore. His name is Elijah McKechnie, and he was born with hemophilia. With this predisposed condition, he would be denied health care coverage in the United States. Luckily for Elijah, he was born and lives in Canada. Three months into his life, he was taken to hospital with a distended stomach, but that was only the beginning. So they did another, they did an ultrasound of basically from his head down to his abdomen to see if they could find anything else. And they said it looked like the top part of his spinal column was compressed a little bit. At the, at the base it was round, but at the top it was kind of oval shaped. And they said that could be normal for most babies, it could just be a bit of baby fat, you can't tell on the ultrasound. But because of his condition with hemophilia, they thought, well maybe we better get an MRI in. Um, so we went and the next day he had his MRI done and sure enough his, he was bleeding. They don't know how he started to bleed there. Um, it's incredibly rare. They'd only ever seen it once before at Children's Hospital. Um, but because they caught it so quickly because we had brought him in for something that they're not sure if it was related or not, they knew right away what it was and they could start treating him. So immediately they started giving him the factor eight, which is what he's missing. His body doesn't produce that so in, his blood starts to clot normally as soon as he's got that in his system. So we were there 15 days in total, and yeah, he's back home. He's now getting treatments at home. It is $1 per international unit, and on his size right now, each dosage is 265 international units. So each dose is $265. When he's older, he'll be in thousands for his body weight, so each dosage will be thousands of dollars. Marilyn Birmingham, born and raised in the United States, moved to Canada in her 20s. In August 2007, she was diagnosed with acute myelogenous leukemia. She was given a 10% chance of survival, but thanks to Canada's health care system, she is alive to tell her story. I was in intensive care for three weeks. I had one-to-one -one, um, nursing care on, at that time. I used just had, I can't say anything more, but it was amazing care. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. <laughs> the, the, it was just incredible. There was, I don't know how to say it, they, it was just, they were there, and it was just amazing. Um, the care was outstanding. During that time, I actually counted the doctors. I saw 50 different doctors. 
I saw residents, which you know is excellent to see because they're right up to the minute on, on what's going on. I, I had people from the infection service, from the uh, the hematology service, from the nephrology service, because my kidneys had shut down, from every service. You know what it cost me? Nothing. Not a penny. It all just came out of my taxes, which I'm happy to pay. It's cost me absolutely nothing. Um, the entire 20 years of my life and the different uh, problems that I've come up against, uh, many visits to emergency rooms, to my own doctor, to the specialists, uh, to the Toronto health system. Uh, it's cost me no money at all um, and it's been a great relief. The system, as far as going into the hospital, seeking emergency medical help, uh, there's no difference um, that I could find and in fact uh, the only difference is their main concern was how much is this going to cost. That was usually their first questions where on this side of the border it's how long is it before I'm well again. In 1992 at our convention in Montreal brother Steve Cook became extremely ill and had to be hospitalized in a Montreal hospital. He was there for two weeks in a life-threatening situation when Steve was able to be uh, relocated back to the United States, our bill for some of the finest medical care that could be delivered in North America was zero. What's happening in the United States as the debate about the future of the American health care system uh, moves along, um, certain forces have really made a lot of hay from passing on repeated misinformation about the Canadian health care system. And, um, and these things are a cause of much anger for our members in Canada who are watching this in American media in a bit of stunned disbelief. Uh, myths like um, that we can't choose our own doctors, that there is no choice. Um, the Canadians are dying in, you know, 24-hour waiting times for uh, emergencies in, in hospitals. Um, that quality of care is poor or that, um, that somehow the public health care system in Canada is about ideology as opposed to being about compassion and humanity and providing a basic human right for everybody. Um, so, so the bottom line for these is that they're all untrue. Well, first of all, the Canadian healthcare system is not a socialist system. It's not a communist system. Our healthcare is paid for by the government, but it's delivered by private entrepreneurs, physicians, physiotherapists, nurses across the country who, uh, you know, may be paid by the government but don't answer to government for what we do. I don't have to ask the government for permission to order a test on my patient. I don't have to ask the government for permission to admit my patient to a hospital. If my patient needs something that I deem is medically necessary, it's covered by the insurance plan period. I don't waste my time justifying that to insurance companies and I don't waste my time justifying that to the public. I get to spend my time providing clinical care to my patient. I have to say that I really feel for Americans who uh, worry about the possibility of developing a catastrophic illness and what that might do to their families financially. And my understanding is that many people, when they get seriously sick, lose their employment and thereby, therefore they lose their insurance. And that's, uh, I'm very grateful to live in a country where there's no link between employment and insurance so that when my patients get seriously sick, they don't have to worry about bankruptcy, they don't have to worry about how they're going to pay for their medical bills. And I think that that's, you know, fundamentally one of the greatest strengths of the Canadian healthcare system is that when people become catastrophically ill, by and large the system responds rapidly, it responds appropriately, and people never have to worry, ever, about how they're going to pay for their hospital bills.